OK. If you've turned over the back side, you can see that this one looks really nasty, right? Again, please try not to worry. We are going to look at this and just follow the steps. Step one, factor the denominators. This is a quadratic, v squared plus 6v plus 8. Remember with quadratics, we want to see what two numbers are going to multiply together to give me that constant, that then add together to give me that middle term. So that is going to give me two numbers that multiply together to give me 8 are 4 and 2. And 4 and 2 will definitely add together to give me 6. Take a look at that second one. It's the exact same thing. So we can rewrite that also, factored out as v plus 4 times v plus 2. Now, hopefully, you're starting to recognize why does that matter. Take a look at that last one. It has a v plus 2, which means, can you guess what our LCD is going to be? We've got a v plus 4 piece. We've got a v plus 2 piece. The first two fractions even already have that LCD. It's just the last one that needs it. So we multiply. It's missing the v plus 4 piece. Multiply both your top and bottom by v plus 4. I'm also going to keep in mind my excluded values. In this first fraction, we see that v cannot equal negative 4. And in the second fraction, v cannot equal negative 2. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite real quick, just because it's a little bit sloppy right now v squared minus 2v minus 15 plus 1 equals 1 times v plus 4 is v plus 4. Notice I haven't even written my denominators yet. Why? Because what's the next step? After we have common denominators, get rid of them. Multiply both top and bottom by v plus 2 and v plus 4. Those are gone, those are gone, and those are gone. Everything cancels out but just my numerators. So now, again, we can go ahead and solve for v. Let's combine all our like terms. On the left side, we've got v squared minus 2v minus 14. On the other side, we've got this v plus 4. Let's go ahead and move those to this left side as well. Minus v, minus v. I'm going to subtract the 4 as well. Do this all in one step. Nothing to combine with the v squared. Negative 2v minus v gives me negative 3v. Negative 14 minus 4 gives me negative 18. And then I have 0 on the right side. This is exactly what I want, because now it's another quadratic that we can try and factor. Think about two numbers that are going to multiply together to give me negative 18. If you guessed negative 6 and positive 3, that was the right one. Because negative 6, negative six excuse me, <laughs> negative 6 plus 3 gives me the negative 3v that we're looking for. At this point, we take a look and see, well, what can I plug in for v to make this equation true? v can equal a positive 6 or a negative 3. That is not either one of my excluded values, so there I have my solutions. 6 and negative 3. Go ahead, rewind if you need to. Watch again. Listen, listen, listen. If you can do this problem, you can do any of them. This is about as tough as it's going to get, OK? All right. Now, take a look at this one, number 9. Anytime I see something with fractions, and there's one that doesn't have a fraction like this 4, I'm going to write it as a fraction. We know that any whole number can be rewritten as a fraction. Excuse me, guys. There we go. Can be rewritten as a fraction over 1, OK? So now, at this point, we go ahead and follow the same steps. x plus 1, 1, and x plus 1. Step 1, try and factor them. There's nothing really left to factor there, OK? So we consider moving on to step 2. What would my LCD be? There's an x plus 1 in those outside fractions. The middle one is just 1, so my LCD really is just going to be x plus 1, which means the first and last fractions don't need anything. It's just this middle one. And what does it need? x plus 1. So multiply both top and bottom by x plus 1. OK? <coughs> now, everything has the same denominator. So we can go ahead and multiply by that LCD. 
that denominator, x plus 1. x plus 1 in the top and bottom cancel out. Notice that I did not cancel out this x plus 1. We still need to multiply that with that 4. That's still okay being there. I just wanted to get rid of all of my other x plus 1s, the denominators, okay? So rewriting, I have 5x equals 4 times x plus 1, 4x plus 4 minus 5. I've got like terms here that I can combine, so I have 5x equals 4x minus 1. Go ahead and subtract the 4x, get all of your x's on one side, and we have 5x minus 4x is equal to 1, and x equals negative 1. Notice I did not check my excluded values. We always want to check those excluded values. So what can I plug in here for x that's going to make that equal to 0? You guessed it. x cannot equal negative 1. What's my solution? Negative 1. So we again say no solutions. That is my real answer here. There are no solutions. x cannot equal negative 1. That was from our excluded values. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for being on top of it today. Go ahead and look at the last four examples, and then take a look at the image I have where they are completed to check against. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and get started on the assignment 6-3, Solving Rational Equations. Have a great weekend, and I will see you all later.